Dan, I had this dream about buffers and the problems they cause on your pedal board. No way, I had the same dream. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delicious. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to that club show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Um, what are we called on this one? I'm not sure. <laughs> the title, you'll know what it's called because it will say in the title, but we haven't quite decided yet. The last show we did that was about buffers was called uh, Buffers Drew Bypass and Unimaginable Medical Excitement. excitement. <laughs> But a lot of people found it really useful mm. because it is a subject of great confusion, isn't mm, it? Definitely. And, and, you know, I think, Dan, you understand this really thoroughly. I don't. And the reason we're doing the show is because we were building a super spangly new pedal board for me and stumbled into a fairly giant problem. Mm. It's very interesting. Which I hadn't encountered before to this magnitude. So we're going to reenact that. Yes, indeed. Like a Shakespearean... We're going to sing it. Tragedy. Whole, yeah. s- sing the whole reenactment. <laughs> oh, Michael, where is thou, Buffer? <laughs> I've got this Buffer that's causing a great big problem. Um, it's more opera than Shakespeare, but you know. Um, actually, there are Shakespearean operas, aren't there? Isn't, isn't <sighs> Romeo and Juliet? I'd be made into an opera with this play. Yeah, okay. That's how cultured we are. Um, yeah, it is though, isn't it? It's a blooming Made theatrical... good pies there, didn't he? Shakespeare. He had what? Made good pies. <laughs> was that Frey Bentos? Anyway, carry on. <laughs> but it is a blooming carry-on, isn't it? It's a theatrical carry-on, this world of pedals. So, right, what happened? Um, we're going to try and keep this to the point, and um, thusly... So far, we've done brilliantly. Yeah. <laughs> So we've taken away all the variables. We're using one amplifier. We're plugging the guitar in the front. We're going daisy, you know, all mm-hmm. the way through the pedals there into the amp. So you can see exactly what's happening in terms of a signal chain. Yeah. Now, now that'll make it easier visually to understand what's going on. Yeah. It means we, sh- we shouldn't have to do too many diagrams. Yeah. Simple signal chain. As you can see, fuzz, delay, octave, overdrive, harmonic trem, delay, out. Mm-hmm. Why do I have a delay so far down the, the chain? It's because it does that cool in front of overdrive thing, which you heard in the in the intro. Love that sound. And the pedals are, as you can see, Dan Drive Secret Machine, uh, J Rocket Immortal Echo, Mythos Argo, Keeley DNM Drive, Supro Tremolo, Catlin Bread Echorec. Now, all these pedals are true bypass, and that is significant, as we will find out in the discussion of buffers. Um, for the detail obsessives among you, the Echo Rec is set not in trails mode, it's set in the true bypass mode. Indeed. So we are true bypass. We are. Here's what happened. Here I am playing my guitar, trying not to step on my glasses. Uh... <laughs>
It's not a small difference. It's not a small difference. Have a look at the meter, Dan. See if you can see, right, yeah, see yeah, if it yeah. registers. Yeah. I'd say that's like a five or six dB. Yeah, and in addition to the volume boost, also comes a radical change in EQ. Yes, indeed. Which hopefully you will hear. So we've got a problem. Truth be told, I don't particular like, particularly like either version. Right. Because neither of, of those is optimised. So I've got a problem. What's the problem, Dan? So the problem is the secret machine is a germanium transistor fuzz based around uh, an old Mark One, I, I want to say, tone bender. It's, it's the, a Zonk machine. It's the Zonk machine, isn't yep. it? Yep. So, which is, I think, 1966. Something like that. Yeah. Anyway. 66, 67, something so like that. So when, uh, when these original uh, pedals were designed, they were designed with germanium transistors. And the, the design of the pedal in particular means that the input of the pedal wants to see the coil inductance from your pickups. It wants to see, and it, it has this relationship with the impedance of the guitar, the output impedance of the guitar, and the input of the circuit. So it actually has what we call um, a, a low impedance input. Normally, if you take something like a Boss pedal, it has a high impedance input, which means it's easily driven by anything. And it has a low impedance output, which means the output will drive the signal. So in the case of the old, uh, like germanium transistor fuzzers, in the original, like, you know, vintage style, um, designs, they have the opposite. They have a low impedance input, right, that works with the, the yeah. pickups, but they have a high impedance output, which means that they struggle to drive the the load, the, specifically the capacitance of the cables and the switches and, the, and everything that come afterwards. So now the immortal, like for example, if you just play now and then just kick the Immortal on and off. Yeah, so we'll prove that the, because the first question is, oh my God, has the Immortal Echo got some yep. sort of bonkers preamp in yep. it? Um, and hope we, we should be able to uh, prove that that is not the case. Yep. Quieter. Exactly. <laughs> so, so all that's happening there is that the Immortal Echo has got a classic high input impedance on the input and a low impedance on the output. So as soon as that pedal is clicked on, um, like it, normally it's easily being driven by the guitar, so we're not hearing that volume difference. But when it's being driven by the secret machine, that high impedance output is now drive like easily driving that low impedance output and it suddenly becomes really really loud yeah so we no longer have that high impedance output trying to drive all the capacitance downstream it's now being driven by the output capacitance of the the, the output impedance of the immortal echo which is low and easily drives it so we get this massive boost not only the massive boost in volume but because the output impedance is so high in the secret machine, it's affected by the capacitance further downstream. So yeah. the capacitor, like the, just think of your tone knob, all right? The more you wind your tone knob in, the more capacitance you're adding to the signal and your signal gets darker. It's exactly the same in this scenario. It's as if we've got this tone control after the secret machine that is wound right down, which is basically the effect of all this cable going back to the amp. As soon as we turn on the Immortal Echo, it drives all that capacitance. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? I think it's important to make the distinction between um, the job that that buffer is doing and yep. indeed the low output impedance versus something like a boost, because it's not a boost. It's simply, imagine you've got, bear with me, Dan, and tell me if this is wrong or right. You've got an amount of water running down a hose pipe. What sort of hose is it? <laughs> no, this is this is a normal hose pipe. Okay. Normal hose pipe at this point. So what we're not doing is throwing a load of extra water in one end and turning up the pressure. What's what's happening on the output of the secret machine is it is impeding the flow 
of the water. Yes. It's stopping it from flowing. Yeah. So yes. you've got this signal flow, and instead of the immortal echo boosting, it's not boosting anything. What it's doing is it is allowing the signal to flow. So yeah. it's allowing the amount of signal that's coming to flow rather than clamping it all down and stopping it from flowing. Yeah. So everyone's shouting at the screen and going, that's resistance. It is. Impedance is resistance, but it's a, it's a mixture of resistance, capacitance, and inductance. Yeah. That's right? so all those things. And, and, and that's why it can be difficult to measure. Um, you know, so... Yeah, it is a combination of all those things. Uh, but understanding that, you know, in this scenario, it's just impedance. That's all you need to know. And that if we drive it with a buffer, it, is, it will, um, that you know, we get rid of all those problems. Yeah. And the effect of doing that is more high end. That's the thing you notice yeah. first. I say get rid of all those problems. It's not necessarily... What I mean is, it's not necessarily problems. Yeah. You, ex you know what I mean? So, because what do you look for when you buy a pedal? Uh, true bypass. Right. True bypass is causing us all kinds of problems yep, totally. in these pedals. So yep. it's not necessarily a good or a bad thing. Um, if, if this is getting a bit too technical for everyone, we will move on shortly, I promise you. Um, so now we're into a fault finding and process of elimination yeah. fault diagnosis. So we all come up against problems like this all the time. I don't know about you, but I always start with simple process of elimination sure okay well let's ask the obvious questions first obvious question is would a different fuzz solve the problem okay shall we get into that let's get into that okay you've heard the secret machine um what you'll see now is some more fuzzes appear on the board you'll hear them and then we'll be back in the room <laughs> It's not as noticeable. The tone change is, is huge. The level change, level isn't, change as isn't, much, isn't as much, but the, the, but the tone change yep. is massive, yep. especially on the bridge pickup. So if you've got more treble in the first place, more's getting put back there when sure. you buffer it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Pretty clear, pretty clear difference. Can I just grab one more fuzz? Yeah. Dan's just brought in the silicon fuzz with a pH uh, by Phil Robinson, Advanced Secretary. Who is Phil Robinson? Phil Robinson is a gentleman that's been working on this problem for a while. Right. And I've, I first heard of the fuzz, I know that uh, Lee Harris, who is playing guitar in Nick Mason's Source of Full of Secrets, has been using it oh, well. and really, really likes it. Cool. So, obviously, that circuit, which is a silicon fuzz circuit, 
is low impedance on the output. Yes. So it's driving, when it's on, it's driving everything. So it's lovely. doing that. It didn't, uh, what was quite nice as well is that when you kicked on the Immortal Echo, it didn't add that really up the top there. Yeah. So it's definitely it's definitely solving uh, that, that issue. issue yeah. um, so what do we say about that then? All these other fuzzes are very vintage in their, in their design. Yeah. In their design. Totally. And awesome. we've mixed up some germanium and silicon here. So the analog man and the uh, Phil Robinson, excuse me, um, are both silicon. So mm -hmm. it's not strictly a germanium silicon thing. Okay. So we know that the fuzz does make a difference, but if you're talking strict vintage spec, yep. the problem still exists. Exactly. Yep. So if you put any fuzz facey derived, which is the kind of thing I'm into, uh, the problem is there. So next, is it the echo? And then a light bulb went on because I hadn't had this problem before. Yeah, it's really interesting. I've been using the secret machine on my on my slightly bigger board without this problem. And then it dawned on me. So this is the pedal I'd been using for the early slapback echo. Mm -hmm. And what do we know about the Bell Epoch Deluxe in its standard mode? It's buffered. Yeah, it's not true bypass. Yeah. Because it has that um, 22 volt preamp in there yeah. that's on all the time, which is why Andy Pro Guitar Shop and I believe even Ed O'Brien. Yes. Uh, likes to use them on the end of their signal chain. Yeah. Because it's the end, the end thing. So, in the interests of completeness, let's swap the Immortal Echo out for the Bell Epoch Deluxe. We'll go back to the secret machine and see what difference this makes. Ta-da! Um, Bell Epoch Deluxe uh, on the board then. So... <laughs> I love that. Just has that warming effect it on everything. It really does. It's to the just back. fantastic. So let's see then, back to where we were before. I'll switch the secret machine on, then I'll switch the echo on after and see if it does that huge volume boost thing. We're assuming that it won't. We know that it won't. Just tremendous. Hear the octave in the secret machine yeah. coming through a bit. Yeah, man. That's just wonderful. So now what we've done by putting that always on buffer after the secret machine, we've got some level of consistency. It, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Because now you can dial in the fuzz to how you like it, and it's not going to be affected by anything you switch on further down the chain. So just to, uh, to prove that fact, if you switch on the Echorec, Yep. at the end of the chain, which is in true bypass, yep. and you'll hear that that, that won't colour, I mean, it'll add the echo rack sound, yeah, yeah. but you, it won't change the sound of the fuzz. This brings our next question in, doesn't it? So what you're going to hear now is the secret machine into the echo rack on and off, then we're going to take the Bell Epoch Deluxe out of the game, and you'll hear the secret machine straight into the echo rack. Because the next question is, what happens if you move the buffers down the chain? Yeah, yeah, great. Because I, we, this is something we haven't tried yet. Thank <laughs> you. 
might be very subtly a bit more, tiny bit more presence. Yeah, maybe, but I think that's much as much as the uh, the effect of the effect, yes. as opposed to just yeah. Because you know. that's the other thing. When you turn an effect on, obviously it's buffered when, yeah. when the effect is on, so you get all that of that as well. Let's try that with the uh, harmonic drum, Dan. Why don't you play for a second? You haven't done any playing. Oh, you need this. <coughs> We've removed all the um, other switching devices. in order to minimise any of those variables that you might think be causing these issues. Yeah, sure. Pretty conclusive. So what we did there swapped the Belly Pock Deluxe out for the Immortal Echo again, which is where we began mm -hmm. to prove no, neither of which were turned on. By the way, they were both in their bypass state. This one being true bypass. This one being buffered bypass, and therefore uh, keeping it all massive down Another. the chain. Yep. Now the, the, the so the anomaly here is we introduced the Supro. Mm -hmm. The difference of turning the Supro Trem on, on after the Immortal Echo was massive. Yes. Because there's no buffer happening here. Mm -hmm. When we had the Belly Book Deluxe here, the effect of turning the Supro on was lessened. Indeed. Yeah. And so, and interestingly, you've um, when you turn the Supro on, as opposed to turning on the Immortal Echo, the secret machine is driving not just that single patch cable to the Immortal Echo. It's got to drive the patch cable, the foot switch, patch cable, foot switch, patch cable, foot switch, blah, 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 right down there. So what we're hearing with the, the Supro on is it's still driving, you know, a much smaller amount of cable than, the, you know, the rest of it going back to the amplifier. Yeah. But it's still, you know, uh, a capacitive element before it hits that, uh, the buffer in the Supro. Capacitive. I'm I'm seeing a T-shirt there somewhere. <laughs> Capacitivist. A hi hi, capacitor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what turning the echo rec buffer on at the end of the chain does. Yes, great. I'm going to just turn the. You'll hear the secret machine on its own. I'll turn the echo rec on and off. Let's do that. Damn. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So what you're hearing now, I turned the effect mix of the echo rec off so you weren't getting the kind of confusion of the delay in there yep. as well. So even just having the pedal on adds that buffer after the secret machine. Now, let's see what the difference, let's turn the effect mix in here all the way down. Let's see what the difference between this buffer there and that buffer there is. Okay, yeah, totally. Yeah, yep. Go for it. Brutal. What do we tell the people at this point, Dan? Because now we're just... The variables are massive. Yeah. One more one more comparison, Dan. Please play the secret machine. Uh, play a couple of chords. Then what I'm going to do is take the echo rec off. Put it into trails bypass mode, which is a buffered bypass mode. So the echo rec won't be on in anything you're about to hear. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear the effect of the echo rec's buffer on and off with the pedal off. I hope that's not too confusing. We'll put some stuff on screen so you can... Great. Uh, right, Secret Machine, Daniel. It's been a minute since we had to just open the pedal and change it over, but I'm pretty sure that was different. Radically different. Considerably so. Radically different. But what I want to do now is just kick on the Immortal Echo and again, see what please. that does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is the reason everyone thinks the Immortal Echo sounds great is because it's got like crazy. <laughs> Output buffer. Um, possibly, but you can see the difference. So, so the the only difference there, like with the fuzz off, yeah. now let's just, just, to, just turn the fuzz off and we'll turn the delay back on so you can hear that's not a boost. Not boosting anything. Yeah. So, Yes, it does have a crazy upper buffer, but I think more likely is that the output impedance of the secret machine it's is so, so high. Yeah. It's so high that it's struggling yeah. to even just the patch cables up to the echo rec. Right. Right? Um, therefore, when, you know, that small jump to the immortal echo just goes whoosh. And part of the sound of the secret machine. As a matter of fact, a lot of the sound of the secret machine is that design. Yeah. So, you know, one of the issues of trying to fix this problem is that you, it changes the sound. Yeah. Do you fix it here with this pedal? Do you fix it there with that pedal? Yeah. Because um, clearly not all buffers are the same. Very, very true. So somebody, you know, very often we'll get questions going, uh, where should I put my buffer? Mm -hmm. Well, the next question is, what is it? Uh, and where you put it will have a, a, a massive difference on the resultant sound. Mm -hmm. So really it's a trial and error process of going, yeah, I can live with that there and mm -hmm. I don't mind it. Um, any more on this, Dan? There's one more thing I want to try before we... Uh... No, I think that's that's fairly conclusive. I mean, all, all, I would, all I would say is just to reiterate the fact we're not talking about the buffer going into the fuzz because we've done loads of, of shows and well, it's certainly been discussed a lot. Yeah. But... You know, this is just to point out that actually a buffer after the fuzz, you know, this is the problems that you run into, yeah. regardless of the input. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, we're, you know, um, there's, it's not a one solution fits all. No, definitely not. Okay, we're going to put the echo rec back to its true bypass state. I just want to talk about overdrive a little bit. Sure. And then I've got one pedal to swap out for the DNM drive, which we are yet to hear. So okay. uh, we'll be back in a click. And we're back. Uh, we're back to exactly to where we were at the top of the show. So the Immortal Echo in, the Echo Rex uh, is now in true bypass state. So everything is true bypass. And when we turn the secret machine on, it will sound a little bit duller than we've been hearing it. Mm -hmm. Now I want to introduce the DNM drive, okay. which is a true bypass pedal. So I'm going to, first of all, you're going to hear the secret machine on its own. Then I'll click the DNM drive on, which is 
a way that I use it um, for a bit of love. Okay. <laughs> conclusive um the dnm drive is doing exactly what the immortal echo did except with added overdrive yep. so it is buffering it and adding overdrive mm -hmm. i'm going to swap the dnm drive out for a very famous pedal that is very famously not true bypass Ta da real life clon centaur in the flesh famously non-true bypass has buffered uh bypass very nice buffer indeed yes so let's go back to the secret machine then and see if we can remember what that sounded like before <laughs> Well, uh, we hadn't done this, we hadn't got this far in the problem solving before now, and that c c gives me a fairly significant problem. Why? Because it sounds so Number awesome. one, Clon's got to go back on the board and we're trying to make it really small and compact. It just does, an a it just does a wonderful thing. So, uh, yes, having that particular buffer a bit further down the board yeah. definitely makes the secret machine come to life again. Yeah. Again, let's... Check. Oh no, we can't because it's in line. Um, I was going to check it against the Immortal Echo. Well, I think what we can do is turn, is put the secret machine on now, and now kick on the Immortal Echo and see if that. So the question is, what if you've got two buffers in your signal chain? There we go. <laughs> So that tells us that the Immortal Echo, like really high input impedance, super low yeah, yeah. output impedance. So if you've got a pedal, a pedal board full of um, endless true bypass pedals, the Immortal Echo would probably be a pretty decent choice as your buffer somewhere along the chain there. But it does have a significant effect when you turn it on and off. Mm. Why did I choose the Immortal Echo in the first place? Well, because it fit. We had that much space. Yeah, it was literally, it was millimetres, so it fitted. All right, um, a question that Fraser has just asked while we've been doing all the mucking about. He's like, he's confused. He's going, hang on a minute, what if the echo rec buffer then is further down the chain? So that's one thing we'll do. Okay. <laughs> um, we will uh, make the echo rec buffered bypass again. Yes, and replace the immortal echo with it. We will, and we will also swap the clon out back for the DNM drive so that there is a true bypass signal path all the way through. Okay, great. Daniel. <laughs> Conclusive? Well, yeah, because you can hear how it doesn't, it's still drastic but it's much less drastic yeah. than what it was straight after is it much less from my ears it was okay so you think it's getting loaded downloaded loaded loaded and then yeah whereas here it's just avoiding all this load exactly all right final thing then um i'm just going to turn the echo rex internal buffer on because the echo rec is now in here in the has. chain yes okay daniel Fraser. 
from memory, it sounds way different. Way different. Yeah. Way different. Is it more different than having it down the end? Probably in the same way that the Immortal Echo was different down the end. So it's getting buffered before it goes through all that other loading. Mm -hmm. Man, this is so interesting. So in the context of the original question, the solution to my problem is either... That there. That there. Or and. Um, but the issue I have with that is I don't love the sound of what it then does to all the pedals down the line. Okay. It also means I have to have it on all the time and not in a true bypass loop. Yes. Which is the same problem. If we do that, mm -hmm. I mean, I won't replace the clon with the DNM drive. I would uh, replace the DNM drive with the clon. I would add it after as a, another gain stage. Um, it does throw an interesting light on why people love clon so much. Because there awesome. we all are trying to listen to the sound of the overdrive going, well, it just sounds like a bit of a middly harsh overdrive to me, mm. when actually what it's doing to the rest of your signal yeah, when right. it's not even on yeah. <laughs> yeah. is significant. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I don't know. That is to be decided what happens in the future. I do really want to use the secret machine because I blimmin' love the way it sounds. Mm. I really, really love it. Yeah. Um, in the way that it is that kind of zonky, slightly octave-y thing. Yep, with, the, with all the mids in the right spot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Depending okay. on where the buffer is. <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? So if you're scratching your head at the moment, loads of people will have turned off because it's like, wow, this is just way too confusing. Yes, it is. It is. And you have to listen to each of your pedals and decide what works for you mm. when you've got combinations of other stuff on. Um, one reason in part why a true bypass loop switcher could be a help. Yep. Or indeed not. Indeed. Because if you've got a pedal that needs to be on all the time well i suppose you could just leave that loop on but at least then you would have the choice sure all right um if you're still with us i think i am just about you've done well we're doing all right yeah um there's a pedal i want to talk about the yuna from 29 pedals it's very cool this is one of the many devices designed to deal with these sorts of issues. Yeah. Now, it is designed as an input buffer. Okay. But interestingly, it has a loop. Right. Indeed. Okay. So you Full can normal. put your fuzz in the loop. So you can buffer the input signal. Right. You can put your fuzz in the loop, and then when you turn it on, it turns the buffer off. Okay. Which is only half going to so solve only, our problems. Yes, of course. For reasons that are going to become... Apparent. However, it is kind of interesting. I've seen quite a lot of people posting about this, not least dear Joey, <coughs> Joey of Landrithshire, and some other people. Shall I tell you what they say about this, Dan? Sure. It's um, it's kind of interesting. I'll give you the the short story. I'll give you the short story. Can we have some, can we have some background story music? Yeah. <laughs> Right, it's an input driver that replaces a conventional buffer to protect and condition your instrument signal and prepare it for whatever you want to do with it. Console grade build, which probably means it's hand wired. Well, it looks a little bit like a console. Uh, actually, one thing that does make me laugh the power supply jack is called whatever. Whatevs. Which means you just plug whatever you want in there and it'll work, um, which I quite like. Um, I it is test an, that. Uh, in an Elite Unity amplifier. Okay. Okay. Um, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. 7.5 to 35 volts of AC or DC power. Right. First up, three sweetening circuits, harmonics bright and low, low adds low end, bright adds brightness, harmonics pushes the air band where the guitar harmonics are. Okay. We'll see that. Adds sweet tube-like chime to any rig. So we'll see if it does. Pre preserves touchiness and snap. Uh, and an increase in effective dynamic range. Now, that's everything that a buffer does. Yes, indeed. Um, a good buffer. Custom tailored load kicks the resonant peak of your pickups, uh, typically about 5 or 10k, compared to a load of a few true pass bypass switches and reasonable cabling. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, so the other... So, okay. Talking about before, the relationship between the pickups and the... Uh, you know, the pedal, and what happens when you keep the buffer on, it's not just about the pedal, but it alters that relationship. And you've got this, um, your peak, 
so your, your resonant peak in the pickup. And when you take away the load, you're changing that resonant peak. Uh, of course. We've yeah. talked about this maybe yeah. with Simon Jarrett. So it's that's, that's, that is half of it. Okay. Good. Um, it will take over 18 dB input with extremely low THD. Uh, many other pedals fold at plus 10 dB, he says. Um, blah, blah, blah. Huge headroom, fast transients, uh, and absolutely flat frequency response. So it sounds like all the stuff that you want. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. And this, we may have over, overblown this, but it's kind of interesting. Go on the 29 pedals website and read about it. Um, so the way we're going to set it up is put it first. Okay. We're then going to put the secret machine in its loop mm -hmm. and see what that does. Cool. Bearing everything else we've spoken about currently, we'll put the echo rec back in true bypass mode and we will put the immortal echo back where it was. Nice. Okay, Una is uh, on the board as you can see and the, the secret machine fuzz is in the loop of Una. Just to demonstrate that, what happens is when Una is turned on, um, the buffer is active and it's driving everything else down the chain. When you turn Una off, the loop activates. Exactly. The is that right? Yeah, the buffer turns off and so, the loop activates. So if we turn Una on, yep, you hear the in fact, let's hear what Una does. We'll turn all the switches off yep. for a second. With apologies to 29 pedals, that is everything I hate about buffers. Right. That top end. Zingy zing. Zingy zingy zing. That sounds like I've taken my two rock away and put a Fender Rock Pro 1000 chorus in instead. Sure. Qualifying statement, if you've got loads of tone suck happening elsewhere down your pedal line, it could be exactly what you need. Sure, absolutely. So let's, let's oh, the, but, the butter knife, by the way, is not for me hurting Dan <laughs> partway through filming. <laughs> it's, uh, I use it to take the pedals off the board, but we haven't needed to. No, for so, strength. Uh, you, can, you can go, butter knife. Right, so, uh, unit on, fuzz on. Yep. So what we should hear now is no fuzz. <laughs> Probably would need to turn the bright switch in my amp off. Right. For to use that. Well, I mean, not that we're going to do it now, but if you grabbed the tiniest patch cable in the world and plugged your guitar directly into your amp and played it like that, and so there was like virtually no capacitance between the guitar and the input of the amplifier, you would hear a lot of those frequencies. We have to do it. <laughs> was over by the amp so I couldn't hear. Right. W were you right? Yeah. No way. Fraser, I was right, wasn't I? Yeah. Okay, so uh, with apologies to Una, Una is essentially taking away your whole signal run mm. and all the capacitance effect and loading effect of all of that. But it's so interesting because it's not necessarily what you want. 
that's the point with buffers and everything, you know. Uh, the buffer isn't a magic bullet. Um, and I, I really like that, you know, I, I love that you can tailor with the, the frequency switches and stuff. It's really cool. Um, but, you know, the cable capacitance and everything is part of the sound. You know, it can be, Yeah. you know. So, and you get rid of it, it's like, okay, well, it's, it's different. It's not necessarily better or worse. It's yeah, just a so different if, thing. If you've got a real dark sounding amp and a bunch of pedals and you, it sort of sounds kind of dead to you. We do get emails from people going, oh, I really love the sound of my basement. And then I put two or three pedals in and it just doesn't sound right. Yep. So in that case, something like Una would be perfect yep. for but you. It, but the other thing is now we've got, if we turn the fuzz on now, we're back to the same problem. If you kick the Immortal Echo on, it's going to be exactly the same problem. Yes. So because we've taken the secret machine out of the buffer um, so, deal, yeah. uh, the, the, we're going to have the same problem. Exactly what you just said. Sorry, I keep repeating what you say, Dan. Chalk and day. Yeah. Night and cheese. So it's really cool if you only want to use the fuzz on its Todd, you know, and switch between a buffered signal and just the fuzz. But we want the flexibility to be able to add lots and lots of things. We do. Okay. Uh, might feel like we've given the Unir a bit of short shrift there because it's not applicable to this problem. Sure. So it's the first outing for us, so I don't want to speak badly of it because we're using it for something that it doesn't solve the problem for. But it's I think it's interesting that you like um or you are very susceptible to buffers. I think it brings us back to the problem, doesn't yeah. it? Because yeah, yeah. every time there's a buffer in the signal that I don't like, I'm like, eee. yep. I can't I can't deal with that. Yeah. So so loading and capacitance is a part of the sound. Okay, classic <laughs> classic example. Brian May. Yeah. You think of that coily cable. Yeah. That the inductance of that coil yeah. is making a difference to his sound. And you think he's using that that, that guitar and treble boosters into AC30s. Yeah, yeah. And you think of his sound. It's it's you know, I mean it, there's certainly top end there, but it's you know, man, it's it's epic it's not shrill and harsh in any way and that is part of the sound uh what about humbuckers and single coils then uh, okay so it's it's a different thing because you're talking about different uh output impedances and stuff from the the different coils one final comparison then pickup selection is going to have to be uh let's do the neck pickup okay because the bridge pickup i think would be a bit spiky <laughs> So arguably, I mean, it all depends on the humbuckers. If you've got um, dark sounding guitar, yeah, there you go. It's get that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So single coils, bright, open, sparkly, as you would imagine, especially the vintage style single coils that Dan and I use. Mm. You add more of that buffering, and all of a sudden, it's yeah, it can be harsh. Can be harsh. Yeah. Or maybe you really like that kind of you know singing sweet presence on the top of your notes. Mm -hmm had a nicening in effect on this, yeah. I thought. Yeah, it's, you know, higher, um, okay, higher output impedance from the pickups, harder to drive the cable, you know, easier to drive the, the cable with the um, lower output impedance of the single coils. So we're getting, you're getting even more capacitive effect mm. from here, which is why someone like that's kind of, you know, can, can be great. Because without it, it's really dark. So, right. Let's wrap lots this up. Lots. Let's wrap this up because it is we've tied ourselves in knots in in a bit. Uh, it, despite being trying to be really, um, you know, organised about it. Yeah. So, 
Mixed problem. Awesome when you talk about yourself in the third person. Uh, Daniel has no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Secret Machine first. Immortal Echoes out. It's just too much. It's too much. Um, Belly Pop might be in. Because I do need an echo there. Yeah, and that's the set. That and it really sound does that, sound great oh, and it solves the problem. Man, it's unreal. I think the clon's got to come back. Mm. Uh, but this will pick all this up. Where, more more interestingly, for all of you watching this, where should I put my buffer? Yeah. And if you've ever asked that question of us and we've replied on, I don't know, Instagram or uh, in the YouTube comments and we've said, well, it really depends. Yeah. Hopefully this excruciating hour of chopping things in and out has proved that beyond any measurable doubt. We've said it a million times before, but there is no substitute for getting your hands dirty with this stuff. You can go on every forum in the world and be as informed as you like, but until you get down and start swapping things around and trying stuff out, you're never really going to know because it depends on so many things. Mm. Um, ultimately, it depends on the sound that you like. If Mick had stuck that buffer on and gone, oh man, that's the best thing ever. Problem solved. Yeah. So and, and it is all subjective. I, I would add that there will be people out there who say exactly that. Exactly. Wow, I just so much. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah, that yeah. sound. Totally. So it, it is all subjective. Um, yeah. Well, okay. So the next time you see this collection, Motley collection of pedals, they'll be on a really nice new board um, with some other nice new things on it. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much for watching. A massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Also, a massive shout out to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Uh, Anderton's Music of Guildford in Surrey. which of, of whom we took a lovely little delivery this morning. Oh, so we did. Yes, we did. Yes, and we did. also to our dear friends in Australia. Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Yes, and also uh, the links in the description below yep. going to our friends at Sweetwater. Yes, and if you buy stuff from them, it helps Dan and I out. We get a kickback from that. Helps us fund the show and uh, all these things in it. Massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grab t-shirts and pedals and journals and hats and... Yep, uh, time is running out. It's nearly the holiday season, crumble time. Oh, far out. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know. That is the first time I've heard crumble mentioned. What? Yeah. You obviously don't shop in the Green Palace. <laughs> They've got the carols going already. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Um... Uh, yes, uh, so time's running out on that. We uh, The shipping is pretty good at the moment, but stock gets low over the crumble time. So yes, um, if you want to buy gifts for your loved ones or indeed for yourself, please do so. Indeed. Brilliant. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.